So I want to start with a, with a provocation. Um, and the provocation is that the idea or the concept of wilderness is destroying this continent. The, the idea of wilderness, which underpins many of our conservation movements, our conservation efforts, this idea that landscapes are better locked up from human influence, is causing the loss of species and the increase in catastrophic wildfires, just to mention two uh, consequences of this colonial paradigm. So it's claimed by some that more than 40% of Australia is comprised of wilderness. And wilderness is, is often seen, particularly in wilderness-inspired conservation, as the antidote to the destruction of, of country or of natural environments by some types of human activity. So it's a bit of a paradox, really, that this attempt to save natural assets or landscapes could be seen as actually one that is degrading them. And I'll unpack this a little bit for you now. So what is wilderness? What's the definition of wilderness? It derives from wildior, uh, which is basically wild deer in Old English, and it's a place of wild animals. And if you ask anyone on the street, what does wilderness mean? Invariably, the answer comes out as an absence of people or an absence of human activity. Okay? It is this idea that there are parts of landscapes, parts of uh, our environment that have persisted or do persist in the absence of human activity. So we think of uh, the use of the word wilderness and how it's surged through time. If you can do this on Google, you can just surge uh, the use of the word wilderness through time. It surges in the English lexicon every time the British invade and colonise a new landscape. It, it surged when the Southeast Asia and India was colonised. It surges when the Americas were discovered. It surges when Australia was invaded and colonised. So it's a product of encountering something different, something exotic, and not recognising human activity in other forms. It's not recognising that an absence of farming equipment, scythes or digging apparatus that we may understand to be shovels or ploughs, that the absence of these does not mean that there was an absence of human activity and human influence and human agency and human management. If we think about it, this landscape here that we live in today, that we're operating in, has been occupied for you know, at least 65,000 years. Maybe longer, maybe not. Every time that more science advances on dating old uh, cultural material, we seem to push the envelope back a bit. When I started, it was around 30,000 years ago. 20 years later, it's 65,000 years ago as, as atomic, mass uh, atomic mass spectrometry gets uh, better and better and we can understand these things. So there have been attempts to kind of redefine what wilderness means so that can account for the fact that Australian landscapes are, as we discover more and more, the product of a long period of human activity. But these attempts to redefine wilderness are pretty much uh, constrained to reports or the academic literature, which, if I'm honest, and I'm an academic and I'm, I can be honest about this, not many people read. Not much of broad society picks up an academic journal and goes, oh, okay, this is what wilderness now means. It still resonates today as the absence of human activity. And it still sets policies and guidelines on how we manage country according to the notion that landscapes are better without human activity. And you see this in the National Park System. The National Park System was created out of the US, out of the wilderness movement. Yellowstone National Park. Okay? We see this today, where apart from you know, maybe some uh, management around assets or fence lines and other areas, national parks are generally just left be in this country. And in conversations with farmers affected by the 2019-2020 bushfires, Without an exception, they all said national parks were the worst neighbours to have because they were not managed. Take the other perspective, Aboriginal people, the concept of wilderness, and there's not a word for wilderness that I've managed to discover with the, the conversations I've had with people, but wild country is sick country. It's country that hasn't been cared for. Yet, still today, we have this situation 
where wilderness values are considered high value, as of, high va of high value, of high biodiversity. So with 40% of our continent comprised of wilderness areas, this being a high value asset, you would expect that we're doing pretty well in terms of our environmental uh, state. Well, no, we preside over one of the fastest rates of species loss on earth and the southeast of Australia in particular, but much of Australia is being ripped apart by an increasing occurrence of bigger, hotter and more damaging bushfires. So what is this paradox? Still today, policy and guideline about how we interact with country is guided by wilderness mentality, guided by this very European enlightenment-derived philosophy that humans and nature are separate. And I was just thinking just a moment ago, it's taken me a long time in my eight-year-old daughter's life for her to uh, immediately understand that humans are animals. I remember telling her early on, we're animals. No, we're not. But that kind of humorous little anecdote belies a, a deep truth. We consider ourselves separate from the world and act, our activities are separate from nature. Okay, something's natural or it's not. We don't have this in between. So you could argue, and many do, that the current state of environmental uh, play in Australia with our rapid loss of biodiversity and our catastrophic bushfires is a climate change problem. Okay, and that's really been picked up by the conservation movement. Climate change, climate change, climate change. Let's unpack this. Species loss, science has proven, displayed unequivocally, that mammal loss, if we just look at the mammals, began in 1790 on this continent. And the fastest rate of mammal loss on this continent occurred prior to the mid-1900s when climate change became an issue, a pressing issue. It's actually slowed since then. If we look at the <clears throat> catastrophic bushfires, okay, the work that I do, looking at pollen grains and charcoal fragments stored in sediments under in soils, lakes, swamps, bogs, all these sorts of things, we see that the biggest change that occurred in this landscape since the last ice age, okay, 12,000 years, is the British invasion and the removal of Aboriginal management. Without doubt, the biggest shift that occurs is at that time. And it, it almost invariably heads in this direction. Landscapes are either turned into farms, they become more open, or they're neglected and they become more woody and get more, more fire. Okay, and a particular example in the Crow Jigalong National Park, in the area burnt by the 2019-2020 catastrophic bushfires, the Black Summer bushfires, let's face it, not much of the country wasn't burnt, <laughs> South East Australia wasn't burnt in that time, we see that for 3,000 years prior to the British invasion, there were no big fires. Within decades following the massacres of Gunai Kurnai people and the removal and suppression of Aboriginal management, we have the first catastrophic fires in the Crowell National Park that caused massive erosion. And just before then, eucalypt cover doubled. You removed Aboriginal management, you removed systematic burning and management of country, the place goes wild, becomes sick and we get catastrophic bushfires. And I'll finish on a, another one, just to hopefully just pull the rug out. And this is what we do in science. We challenge our assumptions. Our assumption here is that the Australian landscape is a wilderness landscape, okay? And this is what I'm trying to challenge in this, and much of my work, is in the central deserts, Madhu country in central Australia. One of the flagged last great remaining wilderness areas on Earth because of its biological values. If we look at that landscape, areas that have been managed by Madhu people systematically with fire are more than twice as biodiverse and they don't have catastrophic fires. Areas that are unmanaged are degraded. Areas that are managed are high conservation value, yet they're considered wilderness areas. In the wilderness paradigm all across the earth, from the Amazon through Southeast Asia through Australia, is used to exclude people rights to access country and manage country. So we need to rethink the way that we engage with country, with landscapes, and rethink the way that we understand the world around us 
in order to move forward and appropriately live in the place we are. Thank you.